But tell us about how you came about our church. Um, well, this happened about almost a year ago, um, in last year in early September. Um, I was at the gym, and um, that's where I met my good friend David. Um, after my routine, um, I like to go into the steam room and relax for a little bit. So I was there sitting down, and he walked in and sat right across from me. And we just started talking uh, general conversation about working out and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, he just started sharing with me how he just came back from Africa. And I asked what he was doing over there. He said, um, I went to a church, and my first thought was like a missionary or something. He's like, no, not exactly. Um, I went over there. Um, he just started basically sharing me his testimony, his life story, how his life was, was changed. And um, him being a complete stranger to me, I mean, I believed everything he said because not just the way he was saying it, but um, I could relate to a lot of his, things that he was going in his past to to things that were going um, to me at that moment. So, I mean, one of the things that I, really, I still remember really touched me at the time was he said that you can't be in, in the light or in, you have to be, you're either in the light or in the darkness. There's no in between, there's no gray. You can't say, oh, I'm a party, smoke, and uh, drink alcohol during the weekends, but in the weekdays, I'm gonna stay clean. And that's one of the things that I was facing at that time. Um, I was addicted to marijuana and, um, and uh, I wanted to stop, but I couldn't. Um, and he just shared like a whole bunch of other stuff with me. We were there for like 30 minutes and and I mean after that we just uh, shook hands, um, took each other's names and and you know just um, said goodbye. <laughs> um, well then um, um, to, after that day um, I started applying the things that he said to me, all, all the advice to me into my life. Um, and I started noticing positive, positive changes in my life. Um, I mean, everywhere, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, all around, you know. And finally, two months later, I see him again. He was working out. He was lifting the little five-pounders. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all know that's how much David lifts. <laughs> you know, and for some reason, you know, I felt like going up to him and, you know, thanking him um, for that night, for sharing with me. So, yeah, two months later, I saw him again. And, you know, I just went behind him, tapped his shoulder. I was, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but um, we met about two months ago in the steam room. And I just want to say thank you for that day for sharing with me because it has helped me a lot. As I've seen, I've noticed positive changes in my life, you know, so thank you for that day. And he was like, wow, it's pretty amazing how something you think is so small could help someone so much. And I was like, yeah, most definitely, you know, thank you so much for that day. I mean, you don't have to, but you opened your heart to me. You shared your story. And he's like, you know what, if you want to learn more, if you want to know more about my church, you know, let me get your number. We, you should come to my church um, or we could just hang out. And I was like, yeah, most definitely. So we took each other's, you know, I gave him my number. He gave me his. And he invited me. The first couple of times I couldn't make it, you know, I was busy. But, I mean, I wanted to show him that I was, I was being serious. I was just talking, you know. I really wanted to come and make a change. So, yeah, I finally came to a Wednesday service, and that's how I started coming. Okay, wonderful. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. This just shows that, you know, no small act goes unnoticed. You know, everything that we do, uh, every time we share and encourage somebody, you never know how much impact it can make. It might not be maybe the same day that you can see the person again. It's like two months later. They probably forgot about him, barely remembered him. Uh, and uh, next thing you know, two months later, they meet again and uh, Lewis's lives begin to take a course for good, uh, for good and for good change in his life. Yeah. So now... Um, Tell us, how did you make a commitment to follow Jesus and when? I mean, really, it didn't take me that long. You know, um, I came here. And, I mean, honestly, before that, I mean, I, I always, you know, believe that um, there's a God and that Jesus was my Savior. But what I didn't have was that relationship, you know. Like, I mean, if a year ago from now you would have asked me, how's your relationship with Jesus? I, mean, I wouldn't know how to answer that question. I'd be like, bro, like, what do you mean? Like, my friend Jesus? Like, yeah, we're cool, you know? Like, <laughs> we go eat tacos and stuff. But, I mean, you know, I, I, that's what I was lacking. You know, I didn't have that relationship. Um, so, I mean, I was here. And then at the end of the, at the service, uh, Pastor Vlad was, you know, he asked us to bow our hands and pray. And he asked, you know, if, if you know that you don't have Jesus in your life and you want to give up your life to Jesus, um, and, I, and one of the other things that David shared with me is, like, you could have all the things in the world. You could have all the money, all the cars, fancy clothes, um, friends, whatnot, all the fame. But if you're missing um, uh, Jesus' love in your heart, you don't have nothing. And that's exactly what, what I was missing. I was miss, missing Jesus' love in my heart. So, I mean, he said, 
if you want to give your life up to Jesus, you raise your hand. And I was like, right away, you know, I raised my hand. I was like, hey, right here, this guy, come on, you know. Saw me that, that same day, you know, I got saved and gave my life to Jesus. Wonderful. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Yeah. And um, now, now tell us, uh, tell us briefly, how, how has your life changed since that moment? What uh, notable differences that you begin to notice in, in your life since that commitment that you made to follow Jesus with all your heart? I mean, really all around in every area of my life, you know, um, financially, I started seeing my bank account go up. I started getting different um, um, job offers. I just recently got a new job. Uh, mentally, I, w- I would always think like so negative about everything, especially about myself. I would always beat myself down, but now I see every. I try to see everything in the positive. See what's positive of every situation in my life. Um, emotionally, I've always, you know, was so frustrated, depressed, angry, sad all the time. And and now, I, even if my day is going not as well, I'm, I try to make other people's day better. You know, just make them smile and whatnot. You know, and I mean, like like I said at that time, you know, one of the biggest problems that I was facing uh, was the addiction to marijuana. And I'm um, from. The day, the time that I met David, September to, to December, you know, I went strong. Like, without it, I didn't want to do it anymore. But I still kept thinking about it. You know, I still, you know, I would, I would think about it, sometimes crave it. And then, like, from January to, like, March, you know, I still did it, like, five more times. And I would get mad at myself because I would tell people that, you know, I was finally done with it. But we had a down low. I was still doing it. You know, I felt like a hypocrite telling people I was done, but I would still do it. And for most of you guys know, you know, we have prayer line service uh, once, one time a month uh, at the end of the month. And yeah, that month on, in March, um, I was, I mean, I would hear te- testimonies from other people that they would receive um, that their addictions would be broken, not just from drugs, but from anything, you know. So I knew, you know, I wanted to come and get prayed for on that prayer line. And I remember the day before on Saturday for screening, you know, I talked to Bryson. And I was like, well, I feel like my, my addiction is gone, but I'm still, you know, wrestling with that, with that spirit. Like, if you would ask me if... If I wanted to go smoke right now, I'll probably say no. But if you ask me again and again, probably like the fifth time, I'll say, okay, whatever, let's go. And I really, I really want to be completely done with that. So, you know, I came, got prayed for on the prayer line. And ever since March till this day now, I've been totally clean. And my, my cravings, my thoughts, they're all gone completely. Come on, church. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. It just shows once again that uh, the will that our power of our own will is very weak you know we can even um use a lot of discipline and a lot of willpower and 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 quit it and stop doing one thing or the other but uh to get rid of those nagging thoughts to to get rid of those things that actually in the beginning that push you towards it is a is only holy spirit can do and so when Lewis realized that, you know, I, you know, I commit my life to Jesus, but I still have few, have few things in my life that, that I need to get rid of. There's some chains that I need to be broken, chains of addictions. And he tried to deal with this on his, on his own, but then he decided, you know what, uh, I can't do it. Even though I'm not doing it, but I constantly think about it. I have these thoughts in my head about it. And so he decided, you know, I'm going to go into the prayer line and I'm going to receive prayer so that, so that addiction, that spirit that's behind that addiction would be broken. Amen. And so as he already said, since March, after the prayer line, he has never had those thoughts, those nagging thoughts about it, those, imp- uh, those uh, impulsive thoughts, those uh, 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 cravings, and, um, and he's been clean. So let's give our hands for Jesus again. So, Luis, um, uh, what are your goals when it comes to the vision of the church now, you as a follower of Jesus Christ? That's a good question. I mean, I would like to see all these pews filled. I would like to see all souls get saved, um, bring people to Jesus and get mentored by all these great leaders. And then, you know, me become a, a leader myself and mentor people and, and just see people's lives get, get, get changed and receive blessings just like my life was changed and I, how many blessings I received. And, you know, just show people that they have a reason why they're here on this earth. And you know, for me, once you find that reason why you live in this earth, life makes sense. And my reason is to follow and serve Jesus every day. And ever since that day, my life couldn't be better. And what, what excites me the most is that, I mean, it hasn't even been a year yet that I've been saved. And, and um, for me, the, the, I think like this is just, a, I've, I've received so many blessings and I feel like this is just the beginning for me and the best is yet to come. Come on church, let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs>